moment. Oh, well, we're good. Yeah, no, we're, we're fine. Sweet. Everyone has their beverages. Yeah. We're good I to do. Go. Got a bevo. <laughs> <laughs> we are good. Awesome. So, uh, Ryan, do you want to do the, the traditional countdown? All right. Wait, do you want a real countdown this time, or...? It's always up to you. You do it however right, you okay, want. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Hello, Yay. everyone. Uh, my name is Dylan Abernathy, also known as Tie Dye here on YouTube, and welcome to episode three of the Pixel Pusher podcast. Along with me is my amazing co-host Ryan Levesque. Hello. Hey, you guys know me. <laughs> yeah. And before we introduce our awesome guest, I just want to say, Ryan, uh, congratulations on getting your first environment artist position. That's awesome at Decagon. So thank you. Rockus applause. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> um no seriously though that is super cool so we're all we're all really happy for you and then along with us we have the one the only the hans Mayard. Mayard. i messed it up i knew i was gonna do <laughs> it i even wrote it down <laughs> you asked him oh, right I, I can't work under these conditions i'm oh, out of god here. that's it podcast is canceled hans Mayard. start the podcast over <laughs> we're oh. <laughs> i crumbled under the pressure man i can't uh, i can't good. take the heat <laughs> um, but seriously, it's awesome to have you here. Uh, we've all been chatting for like 30 minutes about game dev stuff already. <laughs> we actually and have. Yeah. We probably should have started recording, but here we are. We're, we're still going to get the conversation going. But um, yeah, it's great to have uh, everyone here sitting down chatting. And um, people seem to be really enjoying the podcast so far. So I'm glad we were able to get another one out uh, this week. It's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, anytime, man, anytime. So, uh, <laughs> Ryan, if you'd like to kick it off, let's let's yeah. get this podcast going. All right. So we wanted to talk with Hans because he's got like a pretty good, uh, I guess, foothold on the social parts of being online with game development or like environment art. Like he streams on Twitch. He's got an art station. He's in a bunch of discords. Yeah, I think, like, are you, like, the owner of your Discord as well? Uh, that's like... actually Shillam, uh, but he's not working in the industry, and I don't think he really wants to end up there, so he's kind of, like, uh, stepped back from it a little bit. Okay, uh, yeah, so like, I'm, I'm I see more of a co-owner than anything, and I don't really yeah. do much there. <laughs> okay, well, regardless, yeah. point still stands, you're, like, everywhere, right? I, so... I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as everyone knows, we like to have a nice little theme for each one of these podcast episodes. Uh, so this one, we thought, like, who better to do, like, a social-based one with than mm -hmm. you? Sweet. So, yeah. Um, I personally met Hans for the first time a long time ago, whenever he was live-streaming on Twitch. And I was working at school in the lab. I'm like, hey, this guy's pretty cool. I like what he's working on. <laughs> and I also showed Dylan him, and I'm like, hey, check him out. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, <laughs> even though this is our first time chatting, I think we, we talked a bit through your stream. I remember I tuned in during class uh, when Ryan mm -hmm. was watching you too. Um, I think you were working on like like a, a square bush or a square shrub at the time, and we, were, we ah, yeah. <laughs> quickly talked about foliage. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we, we go way back, man. We're, we're best oh, yeah. of pals, right? Thick as thieves, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, but yeah, I know this is like the most, I guess, overdone question, but I love hearing it, and I know a lot of other people do. Uh, if you don't mind, just super quickly telling us about uh, yourself and kind of how you nuzzled your way into the game industry, like your your whole history and story as far as that stuff goes. Right. Yeah, we're by, a, we're by a fireplace now. Uh, we yeah, expect yeah. a great story for bedtime. Of course, I have my, my tea ready, you know, in a house coat. I was going to say, like, a little glass of scotch or something like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah um, so, so I originally I wanted to actually be a concept artist. Um, so I actually, since this is kind of more to do with, like, the the uh, sort of streaming presence or, like, like internet presence, I guess, um, I, I started streaming in, like, 2015 like I had just graduated from high school and I was um actually no it was sorry it must have been like 2014 um and I was doing um like digital art and stuff uh on on Twitch and I was trying to get better and stuff like that and I, I had just applied to um 
or I was thinking of applying to to a school to learn more about like concept art or illustration or something like that. So, uh, you know, that that went on for about a year. Uh, and then I actually got into school. I went to a school called De Montfort University in, in, in the UK in, in Leicester. Um, so a huge shout out to uh, <laughs> to my to my DMU uh, um, friends. But I, I actually the, the course that I studied on was was like mostly focused on 3D. So I, you know, I would start learning a little bit of 3ds Max or whatever during the day and I go back to doing personal work at night. And I at first I didn't like 3D and I didn't really want to learn 3D and I, I was just going to focus on my 2D stuff. And then something clicked and I was UVing one night and I was like, hey, this is actually really fun. UVing, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of, all, of, all things, the 3D stuff. of all the 3D stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I, I could feel like in my bones. I was like, I understand this now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like everyone has that moment, um, at least when you first learn UVing, where you're like, yes, it all makes yeah. sense now. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and then and you look back on it and you're just like, how did it take me so long? It's, it's, it, it, it like, it, it gets so, everyone work, gets themselves worked up about UVing, but it's really just, it just ends up being a chill time. <laughs> well, it's like, have you ever had to explain UVing to someone who has no idea what it is? And just yeah. seeing like the the glazed over look in their eyes, like yeah, <laughs> so it's weird. The way, the way I always explain it is like you know when you like have a cardboard box and you want to recycle it. Mm -hmm. That's basically like how I explain UVing. You just you make it into a net and then you. It's a gross oversimplification. Yeah, but, like it's, it's perfect yeah. though. But then it's like as soon as someone's like, "How do I do that for a person?" You're like, "Oh." Mm. Mm. <laughs> how, how do I where do I put my uv splits for hard edges yeah. uh, <laughs> you just gotta build oh, up to that it's like baby steps but yeah no for sure um but so so I had that moment and I was like I could I could actually start doing this more um and so I I kept on I kept on you know making stuff in my spare time and and I I started doing like um like hard surface like like just one hour hard surface uh, like exercises and stuff like that. Like, and it wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, and this is probably bad. Like I didn't have any reference or anything like that. I just was like, okay, let's make like this kind of shape and you know, maybe we'll work on some Booleans or whatever and try and learn that. Um, and in, in second year like of university, I was like, I, I came to the decision or came to the frightening conclusion that uh, designing stuff all the time and, you know, illustrating or whatever and, and, and making concept art was actually just something I wasn't really good at. Um, and you know, that was, that was kind of difficult, uh, to, to, uh, sort of face that reality. But, uh, I was having so much fun doing, doing 3d stuff. I was like, you know what, you know, that's, that's fine. Like I can just do this. And I actually really enjoyed, uh, doing environment art and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. And so then I graduated and I, during the last year of university, I sort of stopped streaming cause I was, um, you know, I, it was, last year and I was trying to focus on my on my work and um, some some personal stuff was going on and so that kind of dropped off for a while but then after I graduated I needed a way of keeping myself you know um, working during the summer and you know you know making my skills <laughs> or improving my skills while I looked for a job um, and so I was like okay I'm gonna stream every day of the week uh, every weekday um, excluding you know Saturday and Sunday right um, and I'm going to do it for like, let's say four or five hours every day. Uh, and I'm going to work on this project that I actually had started um, when I was when I was still in university. Um, and I, uh, I, I it ended up being like the best decision I've ever made um, because I made so many cool friends. I joined discords. I like all of all of this cool stuff happened uh, and I got so much help from all of my viewers and I was able to help other people out. And it, it, it felt really, really good. Um, so and and now I uh, I'm at Respawn uh, doing doing environment art with a really cool group of people actually. <laughs> Man, so, that's yeah. awesome. I think I think Ryan yeah. and I can both draw sort of parallels from that because like I've been doing YouTube for for well we were just talking about this for like several years. It's been quite a mm -hmm. while, um, but I definitely had to stop when school was getting a bit more intense. And now that it's done, it's like it's great to be able to sort of do it in a way where it's like you have the time and you're, you're able to sort of put your attention and, and efforts into the things that you really care about and people get naturally drawn to that. And then, you know, with this podcast, for example, I'm meeting awesome people all the time, like you and our, yeah. our previous guests and, and well, Ryan, you're literally streaming as well. So 
Yeah, well, that's on pause for now because oh, now I'm yeah. working two jobs and like got to do some other stuff. But Oof. yeah, yeah the, well, the stream I is hope... helping you. It, it, it really did. Like while I was streaming, I made my stool prop that I made, and that's what ultimately got me my job. Right? <laughs> so I mean, it looks so yeah. dope, dude. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, it's like I probably wouldn't have done that in at least the same amount of time as streaming because like when you're streaming you're in focus mode right Mm -hmm. like you're just chilling working hanging out with some people and yeah it's awesome yeah no definitely uh i think that's one of the things i like about it most because like not only are are you like are you working on you know just your own thing you can also see what other people are working on and you know see how they do certain things and you know ask questions and things like that and it's it's such a great environment um but anyway yeah (laughs) yeah um actually so like backtracking a bit to like Mm -hmm. where we were talking about uh that time in between school and when you got in the industry Mm -hmm. what was what would you say was the hardest part getting into the industry for you uh (laughs) Uh, applying uh, that's I and I think I think that's what most people uh, struggle with um, it's really difficult to just push yourself to apply to places because it really does feel like you're sort of at the bottom of a hole and you're just like there's like a bunch of people standing up at the top of the hole looking down at you just being like just come on just throw the rope like throw the rope to us and we'll, we'll pull you up and like you know sometimes you'll throw the rope and like they'll like not catch it or whatever and it'll just kind of fall back down to you and you're just like sat there like well maybe i should just stop trying you know people aren't going to help me like or, or people won't um you know uh you know take a look at my work or whatever if they're if they're not hiring or whatever like i might as well just stop and i think that's where a lot of people actually quit um like, cause once you learn the skills, like if you, if you're, I guess this is going to get a little bit deep, but if you're given evidence that you're like not good at something and that's sometimes what it can feel like if, if you're not, you know, um, getting any interviews or anything like that, it feels like people don't think you're good enough. Um, and that's, it's really difficult to kind of push past that sort of personal view of it, you know, and, and realize like these people are just like, they're just like you, they're looking for people that will work with their team. Um, and you know like there's so many different different factors there and it's hard to move past the the whole like oh don't they don't they don't hire they're not hiring me because i like i'm a bad person or like my art's not good enough or you know whatever um and that was that was the hardest part for me because like i i i would like i would i would want to apply to places and i'd have the tab sitting up like in my browser for like i don't know like weeks uh (laughs) and uh like, I just wouldn't do it. And I, I would always make an excuse like, uh, like I have other stuff to do. Like, I don't want to apply to this place really, you know, all this, all this kind of stuff. And that was ultimately just lies, you know, so I didn't have to feel any sense of rejection or anything like that. Um, but so, so there's that aspect. And then there's also, um, you know, working on your, on your work, like all the time and, and, you know, improving and stuff like that. That's, that's also difficult, especially when you don't have like a motive, um, for doing it other than getting a job like you know you don't have someone standing over your shoulder being like hey do your work do your work you know um and and so it like and again like streaming helped with that <laughs> so, yeah i was gonna say it sounds like the <laughs> perfect solution right it is it really is because you have other people like being like all right when you when you're getting back online like if you miss a stream people will people notice especially if you're so consistent mm-hmm. you know um and also uh you know, if you have if you have some friends that you've you've known that watch you stream or whatever, they'll 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 help you out and and sort of make sure you're staying on track and things like that. Even if you're yeah. not having an off day or whatever, <laughs> they'll call you <laughs> out, right? They'll call yeah, you. Yeah, they will. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just the best kind of people. Why aren't you streaming right now? You should be streaming. <laughs> <laughs> huh. yeah, so then, yeah. what exactly was it that that pushed you over the edge and made you apply or respawn? And and how did that whole process go down? So actually it was my mom oh (laughs) yeah (laughs) unexpected yeah so just a a little like history of like that that time like last it was like it was like last year this time yeah around this time last year um my my mom and i were in michigan and my dad um works with the u.s state department so he's 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 currently in australia now actually and they were they were in australia for like four years um so I finished university and came back to the States and, you know, my mom 
you know, doesn't have any job stuff going on down there. So she, cause she's basically like, she's a writer. Uh, so she, you know, doesn't have to have to be anywhere. So she came in and stayed with me in, in Michigan in our, in our place in Michigan. And, uh, you know, she was trying to get me to apply to places and I was like really nervous about it. And eventually she, she sent the, the application for like respawn to me. She was like, just apply here. And I didn't have an Xbox uh, when Titanfall came out and I didn't have like a, a PC and I didn't, I didn't get the game, but I always like, I always like looking at the game and I was like, Oh, this is so cool. Cause it was like my dream. I was like, you can pilot a mech and you know, <laughs> cause I, you know, I, I'm sure you guys feel the same way about robots. Uh, oh, we were, we were just talking about <laughs> Ava before, right? It's, yeah. It's yeah, pretty we much oh, that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll do it. And I actually applied when I was still in Michigan, I think. And then, um, uh, our, our house in Michigan, like, we don't have, um, like, it's not winterized, so we had to leave during the winter. And so we went to Illinois to stay with my grandmother. And, um, like, a month or two in at, at Illinois, I got, like, a message back from Respawn. And they, you know, they wanted to do a phone interview and stuff like that. And it was, I was so excited. I remember, like, I had, like, slippers on. And I was in the basement or whatever. I was literally living in my grandmother's basement, which... Uh, it's not a good look. Um, I kicked off my slippers. You can laugh at that. That's okay. Um, and I was like, I ran up the stairs and I was like, mom, I got an interview. Um, but I, I applied to them because of the, the mechs and, you know, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. And it, it seemed like they, they had a really good uh, studio culture uh, just from the reviews on Glassdoor and stuff like that. So that was a really long tangent. I apologize. No, <laughs> no, that's no, no, no. I'm glad we'd like to hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That's awesome how that turned out. I'm glad you, you had people sort of motivating you and pushing you along and, and it I was, mean, it yeah. worked out, right? So it was rough. Um, just going back to that, that feeling of like inadequacy when you, when you like get the, the no, uh, from a studio or whatever, that, that was tough. Cause my mom wanted to go back to Australia, you know, to be with my dad. Right. And the only reason she was in the States is because I was there. Um, and she didn't want to like leave me alone and try and figure out all this stuff for myself. So, uh, like it felt like my art or my lack of ability or per like rather perceived lack of ability was, um, keeping my parents apart. And like, that was tough. And so they had that on one side and then my like nervousness about applying to places on the other. And it just, it was not, uh, it wasn't great. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad, uh, that's over. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so I guess this this question is a little bit off um, mm -hmm. script and where we wanted to, to take this, but That's a cool. lot of people right now um, are probably finding themselves in that position. It's right around the time where you know school's been out for a bit. If people just graduated mm -hmm. this year and they haven't gotten anything, they're probably starting to get pretty discouraged. Um, mm -hmm. Would you have any advice for people like that, or people who are starting to say, "Hey, maybe I shouldn't apply anymore," or "Hey, maybe you know I got a couple of rejections. This isn't for me." Mm -hmm. Um. Well, so, so the, the, the main thing is, like, I guess no matter what level you're at, like, if you, you know, you, you get, like, the, the legends or whatever on ArtStation, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm sure, like, at, at some point in their career, they're going to, like, even at the top of their game, they're going to apply to a place and they're, they're going to either, you know, get rejected or it's going to be, like, a not now thing. So, like, the rejection isn't going to go away. You know, that, that feeling isn't, isn't going to um, just disappear. It'll, be, it'll certainly be easier for you to get work when you're, when you're experienced and stuff like that. And that's just kind of the... The, the nature of the industry. Um, but there's always the chance that you're going to get rejected. And again, like you're always going to find a reason not to do something. Um, so, so my advice would just be like, rather than just blindly applying to places, um, you know, maybe, maybe the, the, the thing is maybe you just need to spend more time working on your portfolio and, and, you know, learning new things and maybe like trying something different. Um, and then I think the, the biggest thing is just working like every day, like, you know, putting in the hours um, it, you know, if, if you're, if you, if you love what you do, it, like if you love the creative aspect of, of 3d or environment art or character art or whatever it is, um, then, then putting in the hours for that stuff isn't, isn't the difficult part. And that's something that you can do that'll improve your skills and take your mind off of um, applying to, you know, whatever your dream studio is and, and, you know, uh, all, all that stuff. So 
it's it's like a win-win you get to put on hold the the nervousness and you get to you know <laughs> build your stuff up i guess um and that's kind of a lame answer it's kind of just like oh just keep working and eventually it'll work out but um but it's uh, true they're, it's, they're... it is it is true and it's like it's that and a little bit of luck and also i'd say this to like every student out there like if you're working on your portfolio stream it because like it, it's so it's so much easier to get feedback um on what you're working on if you have a live audience just sitting there like watching you do your work and chances are a lot of them work in the industry as well like the, the amount of industry friends i've made on twitch is like ridiculous like you know and and it's it's such a nice community and no one's gonna no one's gonna tear you down or anything like that if you're if you're if you're you know if you feel like you're not doing a good job like usually people will encourage you and be just like no just keep on working on it it's gonna be okay yeah um, I, I can totally vouch for that as well like i yeah. i don't have a lot of experience streaming but as someone who's uploaded lots of tutorials and speed arts and whatnot um mm -hmm. like i'd have people comment and then i would i would find out later on like oh they're working at ubisoft or oh they're working at ea or something like that and then yeah. you'll follow up with those people and since it's such a, a friendly industry and they already recognize you like they'll mm -hmm. answer any questions you have and and um a lot of the times I would even post things that are blatantly wrong. Um, right. like I post tutorials and they're just clearly not the best way to do something. Those have been taken down since, but people would let me know pretty quickly, um, right. which helps me out. And then I can sort of take that video down, adjust it and share it out there again. And people will, will learn from that. Right. So yeah. it's any kind of way you can share information is a great way for people to find you and for you to learn simultaneously. So, right. And also the, the the likelihood of of more than more than one person in the industry being in your chat, maybe um, it, it's also like instant fact checking as well. So like if mm -hmm. you say something, like you were saying, like if you if you were to put out a video or if I were to say something on stream and someone's like, ah, that's not right, they can instantly tell me. They can be like, no, it's actually this way, um, and this is why, rather than rather than just being like guessing. Because I feel like there's a lot of misin like misinformation that gets shared around a lot. Um, mm -hmm you know a lot of the time and that makes it confusing for students because it's like yeah. well, which one do i believe um i think for ryan yeah. and i that was um it took us forever oh. to figure out baking properly there's, there's yeah. like a yeah. million different rules <laughs> but like only one of them is right <laughs> and it's just like yeah. everyone has their own way to do it um, yeah yeah it took way too long to figure out how to do that properly Dude, but. I still I still have to do like thirty test bakes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I'm with you on that, but eventually uh, it's there. And the fact that you can get it done though, that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um but yeah, like if you're if you're if you're out of school and you're you know, it, if you don't have to if you don't have that's a that's a real um like plus as well. If you don't have to work a job, like if you're still living with your parents, um, that's actually really good because that means that you don't have to worry about income and and like you know food and stuff like that so you have the perfect opportunity to just um you know start streaming and get into the community and stuff like that uh and and you know work on your portfolio uh yeah and actually that's, i should mention also like when you when you first start it's a little bit depressing because you're gonna have like 15 streams or something like that where like no one shows up uh <laughs> but like you just put on your music and you just you make the box and you subdivide it, and then you make more boxes, and that's environment art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, also, like I feel if, uh, let's say you don't have the rig that can handle streaming, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, although you probably should if you can handle environment art. But anyways, let's say you're waiting two hours for lighting bakes, and you can't run a stream. Um, just chilling in a stream is good, right? Yeah. Like being a chat, a chatter, like. For example, like on my stream, I've had people come in and share their work and like we talk about the person's work and like it's the same with you. Like I go into your stream and like I talk about my work and then you pull yeah. it up on the stream and like you talk about it like it's just being in the community and like having all those people like help you get to where you need to be in order mm -hmm. to like get to the point where you can apply to places and like can you continue to learn and stuff? Yeah, like even just being a viewer on Twitch or like even YouTube, like with Dylan's case. Yeah. Like that'll help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's like, that's definitely um, a good point as well. Like being, being a chatter, like, you know, if you, if you, um, 
if, if a streamer, like I, I like to ask what people are working on, like on my stream and, and a lot of other people do as well. Like Sir Digital Bacon will do it. And um, doesn't, doesn't Dynasty do that as well? Yeah, uh, um, I think so. I don't know how yeah. often he does it uh, these days, but I remember a couple of years ago, this would have been in my first year of college um, when I was working on a competition piece for, for Ubisoft that I was going to submit. I, I would send it in and he would critique me and give me all this incredible feedback. And I can go and, you know, tweak it and then send it in like a week or two later and get more feedback. And that stuff, it, it's infinitely valuable. It, it's so great to get like such a fresh, not to mention professional perspective on something. Right. Um, not to mention the entire chat is also seeing it and you're getting like all this feedback. And Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's just something you couldn't really get anywhere else. Like you could say bring it to school or something like that. But um, even then, like you're not going to get a, a super professional viewpoint unless it's from your mm -hmm. professor. And a lot of the time they're busy and, and you might not get their full attention if it's during a class or something. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Sure. Um, I'm just going to quickly steer this back to uh, Sorry, what we were yeah. talking about before. No, no, no. It's <laughs> great. It's great. That's the whole point of these is, is just right. talk about whatever. But um just sort of referring back to that chunk of time where it was like you starting to stream and, and you getting your first job and all of that. Um, anything about that process that you would change if, say, you could just go back or give advice to yourself? Anything that you think um, would be helpful to play out differently? Uh, so I, I actually don't know. I, I think it, it's it's less to do with... I think it'd be more to do with just like technical things like and obvious that's like the obvious one right like mm -hmm. you know especially especially for you know working on unreal like I was really struggling with lighting back then and I really could have done with like watching some lighting tutorials um but that's like that's like really specific uh I I think maybe the thing that I probably should have done more is uh like find reasons to go outside and you know uh have a bit of a life um because for, for that period of time, like I was, I was in, when I was in Michigan, like my friends, like the summer had ended and the friends that I had there all went off like back to, to college and stuff like that. So like, it was, it was basically just me, uh, like me and my mom, <laughs> me and my mom in the house. Uh, and, and I didn't really have any, any sort of reason to like go outside or do anything. And it, I feel like that kind of, um, I feel like that kind of hurt me a little bit, you know, uh, like not not badly or anything like I'm, I'm i'm fine uh but uh you know taking a break every once in a while and not and not just focusing on work um would have would have probably been been good for me to do uh i i don't want to i don't want to sound like oh i just worked too hard but it really didn't <laughs> it didn't feel good for a while there where i was like stressing out about like trying to get the project done and, and applying and stuff like that without realizing like you know what like i can take 15 minutes walk along the beach or whatever you know um and and just try and take a break oh well you're you're talking to the right guy about that um <laughs> like i i touched on this so i won't go super in depth about this because i touched on it in the last episode but yeah like i i moved away for college and pretty much just no life to my work as well for the first couple of years and and looking back i'm thinking like you know there were so many missed opportunities and chances to make so many other friends and, and do other activities and stuff like that, which I ultimately think would benefit your work in the long run. It would mm -hmm. give you more things that you're inspired from. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And I know a lot of artists are very, um, in a very similar mindset as that, like they, they get caught up in their work. I think, uh, Taylor also talked about that in the last podcast, right, Ryan? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It, it's something that I think a lot of us sort of, end up doing subconsciously and then once you reach your goals you it's only then that you look back and you're like oh wow maybe maybe i shouldn't have done that <laughs> maybe that was a bit much but yeah um, well I'm, yeah yeah, everyone, uh, yeah. Uh, okay i'll go there we go yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone can look back and be like hey i should have done that differently or hey i should have done that instead or maybe i should have taken a break there or maybe i should have like worked a little harder there like like everyone knows the saying like you're your worst critic right mm -hmm. so no matter where you are you look back and you're like there's something wrong right well that's true not yeah. always wrong but like there's something that could have been done better at least right yeah so it's not like a um like you're looking back and you're like oh i 
could have gone outside and hung out with friends more, right? Right. But like, like everyone could say something similar, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, like, it's always great to be aware in the moment, hey, I should go outside, (laughs) spend some time (laughs) with friends. Yeah. But, like, there's also good things that came out of you not going outside and spending time with friends. Like, you grinded and you ended up getting to where you are today because of that, right? Yeah, that's that's true. That is true. One of the things I always remember, and, and this is, like, a bit older on my channel, but I, I had the chance to sit down and talk with um, Jonah Loeb, who was the guy who sculpted the dragons in Skyrim and, and did a couple other characters for, for Fallout. Um, oh, that's dope. Yeah, he's such a nice guy. <laughs> um, but anyways, we were talking awesome. and I brought this up. I, this was pretty much like we had this chat right when I was in like my busiest slump and I was really feeling it. And I asked him the question. It was very much like, you know, how how do you get around that? Like, clearly you're working super hard and 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 probably spend the most time out of anyone doing this kind of stuff and he's like no like you you really have to take the time to to enjoy the present because that's what what fuels your work the most and stuff like Mm -hmm. that and ever since he said that i'm like damn it's so true it's so (laughs) true like don't get me wrong like i love just sitting down and grinding away at work but you really do have to take care of yourself it goes hand in hand with it um yeah like if you if you cut the corners on taking care of yourself it'll eventually come back and and bite your work in the butt so yeah everyone listening out there go for a walk after this (laughs) or (laughs) hey hey you can bring your phone with headphones on a walk while listening to this there you go take take it take us on your walk Take yeah. us on your walk. We can. We'll, we'll be right here in your head. Just talk. <laughs> yep. take, take a few moments to like take one ear out of the earphones. Listen to the beautiful birds, the nature, or like chase a squirrel or something. <laughs> Pet a dog, you know. Chase, yeah. chase a squirrel, <laughs> or bring your dog so they can chase a squirrel. Yeah. Are you judging me for chasing squirrels? I mean, I... <laughs> no. Hey, it's we go it's a healthy. Park lots of exercise. Yeah. <laughs> better than uh, a treadmill <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah <laughs> perfect but, so recently i've been so I, I i learned my lesson there and i've i've been i'm actually going on a hike tomorrow uh with, with one of my one of my buddies um and uh i've been doing that for a couple of weeks and i actually missed out last week and i felt i felt worse for it um but just going on like a hike and like getting tired is a super important thing like getting physically tired i think is like because i don't i don't work out uh, or go to the gym or anything like that because I'm lame. Um, so I don't get like physically exhausted enough, and that's not really good for you. You know, you you sleep worse. You know, all, all kinds of all kinds of things. So like, you know, just just every every weekend, just going for like a hike or something like that. Um, even if it's like the same trails, like it's it's such a big help actually. Like you you feel like you you feel accomplished in something other than your work for for a change, um, which is important, I guess. Yeah, so, I, I completely yeah. agree with that. Like, yeah. you always feel better. Like, actually, maybe not necessarily the day after, but like whenever you're finally <laughs> in bed, getting ready to sleep. Yeah. You're like, oh, I, this is going to be the best sleep of my life. Right. And it usually is. <laughs> exactly. And then, oh. like, the next, but then the next morning, you've got the soreness and stuff, but you oh, still feel yeah. good. Right. You're like, yeah. yeah, I earned that. Like, it felt good. I earned the burn. <laughs> Yeah, I felt the burn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's what I'd change. I'd I'd go for more walks. Get a dog, everyone. And yeah, yeah. Solve walk all your your problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna be spinning off a bit here, but you guys remember when Pokemon Go was the new in thing? Yeah. Like, oh, it's, God, it's yeah. still it pretty big so right good. now, but like when it first came out, man. Although, did you see the meme of the dog that was really swole? Oh, yeah. it, it was yeah. like everyone's dogs this week <laughs> oh gosh they, yeah. they bring their dog for like 10 walks hey maybe installing pokemon go you get to, like <laughs> most of us are gamers right yeah hey you can game while you're walking there you go and listening to this podcast of that course. too don't <laughs> forget <laughs> that combination yeah <laughs> it was a crazy time i remember i remember like we're going on such a tangent here but i, I remember when it first <laughs> okay. came out like i was in grand rapids with my friends um and like i've never seen more people outside like it was like mm-hmm. grand rapids is a relatively big city and and so like 
like so many people and everyone was on their phones everyone was like looking at pokemon and like like there'd be crowds of people running like yelling like oh there's a snorlax over here like yeah <laughs> it was crazy oh I, I saw this post on facebook a while back and it was so true but it was so like just like you wouldn't think it to be true but someone wrote like um what was the happiest the world has ever been and, and someone commented oh, like yeah when Pokemon Go first came out. And it's right. so true because literally you could go anywhere. Everyone was playing. Everyone was helping each other out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's time to get back into it. <laughs> so I, I, th I that, think, <laughs> yeah, I think our next podcast episode should be Pokemon Go only. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. We should, Anyone we should at change... Niantic want to come on? Shoot us. In <laughs> <laughs> we got to change the title from a uh, pixel pusher to, to Pokemon pusher podcast. Oh boy. Yes. Yeah. Oh. We're definitely on topic this time, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a lot to do with environment art, okay? Yep. <laughs> Everyone's uh, awesome. I don't want to be the guy to focus us a little bit, but... You gotta do be it. the guy. Take one for the team. Do it. All right. You guys can all leave your hateful com uh, hateful comments on the YouTube video and stuff, <laughs> but... Anyway, well, for me, uh, <laughs> it's my channel. Yeah, you're, you're catching that bullet. They're, I get all yeah, the death I'm, threats. <laughs> I'm, I'm void of all fault right now. Like, there's nothing I can do that's wrong. Of course, everything is Dylan's fault because he it's allowed it to be on his channel. He right? Channel. So direct your hateful comments to Dylan. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So Hans, regarding your social life at, a, like, a studio, how different is it, and like, how hard is it, like? Whenever you first joined, how was like the mingling process with your coworkers? Like, was it difficult, or like, did did you have a rough time fitting in? Did you have a rough um, time like meeting friends? Because like you moved from Michigan all the way to California, right? That's, yeah, that's different, right? So so I've moved, um, I've moved a lot in my life. Like I've moved, um, like I, I've lived in Pakistan, the United States, Thailand, Germany, Austria, and the UK. So like Whoa. moving to a different place isn't isn't new. Um, and it's actually it's actually kind of weirdly comforting in a way, like leaving something behind and, and going somewhere else. Um, and you know, I, I was I guess I was a little bit nervous like when I when I first like when I was walking because I, I walk I live like fifteen minutes away from work. So um, I was walking to work and I was wondering, I was like, oh, okay, like like how's this gonna go and stuff like that. And as soon as I got in the door and started, you know, talking to people, it was instantly like, oh, this, that was a stupid thing to think. Like everyone, everyone's awesome. Everyone was so friendly um, and so welcoming and um, like just, just so, so open to, to hanging out. Like we, we, um, like we went, we went out to lunch as a, as a, as a, as a group. Um, and, you know, they were even they were even kind enough to help me find something vegetarian at like this restaurant that basically only had meat um <laughs> they didn't know it was cool but um so so like and so that's just like as coworkers they were just really friendly as coworkers um and now that i'm starting to get in, like get to know people a little bit better like i i'm i'm making friends and it's it's really cool um so as a new hire i guess it would depend on on what the studio culture is um like because i know i know a lot of i've heard from from other people like when they when they start it's a little bit more difficult to start talking to people and people are a little bit more reserved and stuff like that but at, at respawn at least like everyone was just very open and very friendly and accommodating and everything um and uh yeah no it, 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 I, I'd, I'd say like if someone invites you out somewhere like go do the do the thing like don't feel weird that that you're that you're you're going with people that you barely know right like they're they you're going to be working with them right like you're going to be you're going to be seeing them like every day um and if they're inviting you they want to hang out with you and they want to get to know you more so like don't don't turn it down you know um so i guess that's that's the that's what i'd say about that um yeah oh for sure um yeah, I, I feel like this question is great for, for me to hear as well, because I just started, I just finished my first uh, month at Ubisoft, actually. Congrats. So, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> it was it was weird, because I felt the exact same way going in. I'm just like, oh my god, there's all these super professional people. Uh, what are they going to think of me? Am I going to fit in? And then you get yeah. there, and you're just like, wait a second. Everyone here just likes making games and art and 
Like, yeah. they're all chill people. They're the, exactly, like, the, the kind of people you want to be around anyways. They're the kind of people you've been looking up on ArtStation for the past several years and, yeah. you know, <laughs> wanted to meet anyways. And, and yeah. it just all works out. I mean, I, you're probably going to be nervous going into any new job or any new situation. But um, for those who, who find themselves in that position, you should probably keep that in the back of your mind. It's like, these are the people that if you've made it to this position, you probably want to meet anyways. And your personalities will just click. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's so easy to find common ground when you when you enjoy doing the same things, like making making art and you know consuming media or whatever. Like, yeah, it's so it's the, that common ground is already there. Like, there's there's already stuff to talk about. Like, you know, you could be like, "Hey, did you see Love, Death, and Robots?" Like, because that was a that was a thing that came out like around when I started um, at Respawn. Not to like date my my uh, <laughs> my join my join time, but. Uh, uh, yeah it's it's really easy um and uh it, it's 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 really cool like and, and like most of the time like everyone's just friendly everyone just wants to to make cool stuff and if you're working together like you're working on the same thing and um like no one no one usually or at least the like it in my experience like no one professional like true no one truly professional has like an ego about their work you know Mm -hmm. oh, like no one's gonna get you know weird with you you know in in that in that <laughs> sense like <laughs> you're not gonna like compare your work to theirs or anything like that that's uh, no one does that i mean um, it's all gonna go into the same game at the end of the day yeah for sure there's no yeah. point <laughs> yeah um, and also like sorry just just to mention like that there's always that like imposter syndrome you know where you're thinking like ah oh, like these people are so much better than me and stuff like that and like how, how do i how do i even compare um but like the important thing to remember, like when you do like start that new job, it's like everyone, everyone here, like at least at least in my interview process, like everyone sat on the main, in on my interview, um, like in the environment art team. So like they've hired you for a reason. Like they mm -hmm. they've seen your work and they know like what you can do, and like they hired you for a reason. Like obviously, you know you're going to improve. Like if you're if you're just starting out and stuff like that, and even if you're you know you're a veteran or whatever, you're still going to improve. But you did land the job for a reason they didn't just like take out a piece of paper with a list of names and just go like ah oh, that one you know um we don't have a hans on our team let's <laughs> let's hire him yeah we, we need an h <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there i just wanted to get that out of the way oh no 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 don't worry about it i, I just wanted to get um ryan's two cents on the whole thing because well mm -hmm. Is this not your first week at Decagon? And, and you've been sort of, I mean, it's a bit different because it's all oh, online, yeah. but you, you're still talking with everyone and, and working your way into the community, right? Yeah, like, okay, so we hang out, like, online, and, like, there's, like, a work room and an online call that we can hang out in. And, like, the first time I was there, they're like, hey, you should hang in, hang out in there when you're working. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. But then, like, literally like the first day of me working there i look in there and there's like eight people <laughs> and i'm like yeah oh, no. <laughs> oh i join in and this is gonna be like who's this guy i'm worried but then like <laughs> i ended up joining in and like everyone was super nice to me like there was um like all of my fears just went away like you yeah. just kind of like just like throw yourself out there introduce yourself be like hey i'm ryan i like game art <laughs> have you seen stranger things hey i thought it was pretty good <laughs> oh that's awesome like you just gotta throw yourself out there and then that's... eventually you'll yeah. get there because everyone like you guys are like this is kind of like a um kind of like a hobby job in the sense like not actually we're not actually doing this for a hobby but like game art like people do this for a hobby like people do this out of their own their own free time not to work it's not like accounting like you don't no one just does actually someone probably does but most people don't <laughs> do like accounting hobby stuff shaming. just for fun like oh mcdonald's i want to do their accounting for like a little bit or maybe some fan accounting like fan art accounting <laughs> like no one does that but like we're no. in one of those like small communities of jobs where everyone's doing it because they love to do it yeah so you're around people similar to you that means that like you're more likely to be friendly with them yeah that's, that's so true actually I, I feel like 
jumping into like a Discord call or whatever with total strangers like, and like eight of them. I think that's actually more stressful than like going to a building <laughs> and seeing people, you know, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I would have a hard time um, jumping in on that, just because like, I don't know you guys, you don't know me, we can't see each other or anything like that. Like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna talk? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, even Good this podcast. Doing it, oh, yeah, like, thumbs up, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm the same as you. I'd be super nervous. Like when I like well, because I I did the same thing with Decagon, right? Um, mm-hmm. But I was the first person in the chat, so people keep <laughs> coming in one by one, and I could introduce myself. And I'm like, this is perfect. If it was the other way around, I'd I'd feel the exact same way. I'm just like, oh god, yeah. everyone's gonna laugh and point fingers. But <laughs> yeah, look no. at that new guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, I was just gonna say, like even <laughs> even this podcast. Every time a new person comes into chat, um which so far is just you that I didn't know. Right. <laughs> um, I, I felt a little nervous. I'm like, I don't know who this, like, like, like how this guy's going to react and if he's going to be chill, but literally within 10 seconds of talking with you, I'm like, Oh, he's, he's one of the guys. He's, he's one of the artists, you know, that's what oh, he watched. He watched Evangelion too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's there what you, you think though, Dylan, like behind your back while we've been talking this whole time, Hans and I have been exchanging messages. Oh, Are you yeah. saying that? Oh, when, <laughs> Dil- this washroom? Dylan guy. <laughs> <laughs> like I go to the washroom for five minutes and you plot to take over my channel. Like, oh, oh no. <laughs> All right, you hack the password. <laughs> no, no, Ryan, we said we weren't going to talk about this on, on the podcast. All oh, right, right. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm to you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we actually have a... a question coming in from twitter and since i have a very bad track record for names this episode i apologize in advance if i butcher this um this one comes in from kier underscore in so i'm assuming their name's kieran uh and they say how do you get more involved in the game art community other than just posting your work uh how can you tell which uh or what interests strangers and um when you're giving good critiques uh so Okay, it's like three uh, questions in one. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. That's fine. Um, so, getting more involved in the game art community other than just posting your work, I think, I think, um, like posting your work, uh, a lot of like, especially if it's on like Twitter or like Instagram or whatever, um, it's it's kind of like throwing throwing it into the void a little bit. Like you don't know whether anyone's gonna find it. It's like a weird message in a bottle type thing. Like if you already have a following, then people are gonna see it or whatever. But like if you're just if you're just starting out or you're like you made your you made your uh like insert name here underscore dev like Twitter handle or whatever, um it, it, it can be a little bit tough. And I think I think the reason that doesn't work as well, um or, or work as well for for like people starting out is, is exactly that like there's there's not really an audience for it um but if you if you do want to post your work like always post your work with like critiques welcome or you know what could i improve or something like that especially if you're a student um and you know the, the chance is like not many people will will actually bite and like some people might not might not bite at all but that's just like another little extra thing to throw on there to build like some sort of engagement um because you know it, it, you, as an artist who's looking to improve you don't want likes you want like you know comments and you know critiques and like you know re- retweets or whatever and I, I don't use twitter like i don't i have a twitter but i don't like using it because it makes me sad um so now you have to follow us on twitter I, you can't just <laughs> casually bring that up <laughs> uh, so so like or like on art station as well like po- posting your work i think art station is a better example because it's like it's just for artists but i know a lot of people do post their work on like instagram and twitter mm-hmm. um so always asking the question like what could i be working on and like how, how do you guys do this or you know if anyone has any information on this subject like dm me or whatever and you know th- that way you'll you'll make you know you, you you might make some connections with people and you might you know improve and that's good um but also joining a discord i think is is like a huge um like a like a huge part of of sort of getting getting more involved because like you have access to like in in like um in 3d fast track uh which is a fantastic discord from uh uh, bartalon on twitch his name is dennis porter he's a super super cool guy um like they're really serious there and they will you know like 
what I've heard from from people in, in my Discord is that they'll go to they'll go to a 3D fast track to get just absolutely fried with how much critique they get and like it's like really good critique. It's not like it's not like we're, they're bashing your work or anything like that. But there's a lot of really talented people there, um, and they will they will tell you what's wrong with your work, which is a really good thing. Um, and then like there's like my Discord, which is a lot more like there's a lot more feel goodery there. <laughs> um, <laughs> So like getting involved in a Discord and the and the cool thing is you can be involved in multiple Discords. You don't have to stick with just like the hardcore guys like on 3D Fast Track or like just the feel good stuff um, like you know my Discord or whatever other Discord out there. Like there's there's so many there's so many like outlets for creativity uh, nowadays, especially on Discord. And there's so many people that are you know posting their work and and um, you know are able to look at your work and and able to talk to you and share ideas and stuff like that. Uh, and you know and be your friend as well like you can make really good friends on on discord um so i think i think that's a really good good way uh to go as well like just just joining a discord like and it's tough like you know the whole thing that ryan was talking about where he had to join a discord call with eight people sometimes it can feel like that but you know it's the same kind of thing like we're all interested in the same stuff we all we all love game art we all love art um and and games i guess um so there's really nothing to be scared of. I hope so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, and then uh, and this is like my response to like pretty much all these questions, it feels like, but stream because uh, uh, that way you're posting your work and making friends and, you know, showing your process and stuff like that. And that's how I got my job, um, you know, in all honesty, like they like I, I included my my Twitch URL on my like cv resume or whatever and they actually watched me stream they were probably in the chat when you guys were in the chat weirdly enough um <laughs> so uh so that's that's that i guess um and then how can you tell which internet strangers are giving you good critiques so so this this is a a story um do you guys know ao guy AO i guy. don't think so uh, okay yeah, you might not I'm have not been sure. there so uh so I was on, I was I was streaming, and I was doing this like uh, ZBrush to Substance Designer uh, workflow for like foliage. Mm -hmm. And I had this guy come in, and he was like, "Why are you doing it this way? This doesn't make any sense. Like, it, it, it's like, it's not a good way of doing it." And I was like, "Okay, well, like, so so, like, what what should I know? Like, what you know, what what's um, what's not a good thing? Like, what what can, like, I, I basically wanted a reason." Um, and uh like he couldn't give one and it was because he didn't understand like what substance designer was and he thought like we were going to tessellate our foliage and stuff like that and you know my my like my uh like alarm that goes off <laughs> um or like my I guess the, the way I, the way I look at it is like if someone is super like adamant that there's like the correct way of doing something without considering other options, they're probably not um, like they're not looking at it the right way. If that makes sense, I feel like that was a really lame explanation. No, that that no, works yeah. perfectly. Like if if someone like we've been saying the whole time, like people in this community are typically very positive and helpful so if someone mm -hmm. is um saying something about your work isn't quite there yet unless they can offer a better reason or a way to do it or a, at least at the very minimum a suggestion chances are they might just be um not very fond of what you're doing or something like that rather than yeah. actually someone who can help you step your game up right well he, he was talking more about like technical constraints like he thought he thought we were going to be like tessellating every plant in the scene because oh, you know in, in designer you you like in order to make it look pretty or whatever you you tessellate and displace it um mm -hmm. so so it was it was that and like we we tried to explain like what we were doing and he was just like you guys don't know what you're talking about and like we had this whole discussion about like ambient occlusion and how like he claimed like it was only invented in 2005 and so like if you used it in 2004 you don't know what you're talking about and it was like it was it was this whole this whole thing so i think i think be very wary of and and there are there are like correct ways of doing certain things obviously but if you mm -hmm. if you encounter someone who like has an ego about what they're telling you and they're like no your way doesn't make sense 
or like the tutorial you're following is garbage, which is, I think that, that was his, his way of putting it. Um, maybe take that with a little grain of salt. Um, so, so that's just in terms of like, you know, technical stuff, but, uh, I'd say try and follow up on like all critiques, I guess, you know, like it, it's, you can always try it. And if you don't like the way it looks, if this is just like purely an aesthetic thing, like you can try it and then, you know, uh, go back to the original way you're doing it. And, and like at the end of the day, like you're not going to hurt their feelings if you don't do what like they said you should do. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that's a, that's a tough question actually. Cause that's something I struggle with as well. Like I, I don't know. Um, uh, there's always the, the question of like your vision versus like technical um, ability, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's 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 tricky, I guess. Yeah, there's no black or white. Yeah, it, it's on a spectrum, right? Yeah, um, I think good but... judgment is usually just good, a good thing to practice anyway. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, there was one thing I wanted to ask. I'm actually really glad you brought up tutorials there, uh, mm -hmm. even if it was like super briefly. Um, one of the reasons that I slowed down making videos so much, and I think a lot of people, including myself, hold back from streaming all the time, is I find that when you're publicly broadcasting or publicly sharing, it takes away from you learning in some regards. Like obviously the community is sharing information, but say I wanted to watch like a really long 20 hour tutorial. Yeah. I, you can't really do that, right? Yeah. Um, as someone who streams so much, do you have like a workaround for that or, or how do you <laughs> like sort of get your tutorials in or do you just watch tutorial? You can't, well, I mean, you couldn't watch something like that the entire time you're streaming. It wouldn't make no. sense. Um, so, so like if, so here's, here's my way of doing it, I guess, is if I'm experiencing a problem in like Unreal or whatever on stream, like I'll look up the problem on Google. And if I can't find like a fix for it in like maybe three minutes of Googling, I'll just ignore the problem, which is not <laughs> strictly tactical. Um, so, so yeah. Um, and then like, I'll, I'll look at a YouTube video and I'll try and follow along a little bit like on the side, uh, while I'm working, like if it's if it's for like a especially shader stuff like in, in Unreal, because I need to get better at that. Um, mm -hmm. So so that that's kind of how I do it. And then if I want to like actually sit down and watch a tutorial, I have to do that on the weekend. Um, and uh, it, it's really tricky to to find the time to do that. And it, it does. I agree. It does feel it does feel like I, I don't have time to to like actually like improve. I feel like I've been kind of doing the same the same sort of stuff and, and uh, getting a little bit lazy with uh, improving. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, uh, it's, it is difficult to find the time to, you know, balance, like balancing work, stream, personal work, and social life, uh, cooking, going outside, all that stuff is really <laughs> difficult. Oh, um, I totally feel that because it's like I there's yeah. some personal projects I want to do, but then it's like I could make this better if I learn all this new stuff. But it's like in a night I can either oh I just hit my microphone I Maybe. can either watch this tutorial or work on the scene. Which one's going to be more valuable? Because I can't do both right now. Like there's just not enough time yeah. today. It, yeah. It's just like another layer that you have to sort of factor in. Um, yeah. And then when you're broadcasting it, I mean, when it's live, that's just a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, it, I guess I guess one way that a lot of people could look at it, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it's like you're trading a lot of that sort of, I guess, in-depth, like like choose when you watch it um, information for live feedback, um, yeah. which both are like have their, their pros and cons for sure. Yeah, I feel like, so I think the distinction to make is like, so the, the live feedback is, is, is just good to have in general. But if you want to learn something specific, you need to find the time to to actually sit down and watch a tutorial because like no one in chat is going to like explain to you, you know, um, how like distance fields work or anything like that. Like no one like, and that's just, you know, what I've been working on. Um, like no one, no one's going to sit down and walk you step by step through a process. Like that's that's something you have to find out for yourself. The chat will help you with stuff like, um, you know, like really quick questions or like, you know, how does this look or, you know. Um, that kind of that kind of stuff i guess um yeah so yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well 
here's another question, but like you've already kind of touched on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as a young artist, like actually, you've already answered this. Like, yeah, I was gonna say, how scary (laughs) is it? How (laughs) scary was it on your first day at respawn? But you said like you weren't really scared, except for like on your way to work, right? Right. But like, Uh, whenever you were first there, like, like whenever you like, I don't know, like first get in or something was there anyone or like anything that made you be like okay like what triggered the oh these guys are cool like me or like so, these guys are uncool like I, mean, I don't know <laughs> they're, they're all they're all lame like me no. <laughs> uh, so i actually started with another guy um who who came from uh high moon uh his name is eugene and he's he's a good dude uh, so we, we started the same day, so it was it was really great to have someone else kind of kind of like being shown the ropes alongside me, um, and like he he'd been in he's he's been in the industry for a while, but um, it was just nice to have have someone someone there that was kind of like it was also like a new experience for them, so I could be like, this is cool, and he'd be like, yeah, this is cool, and you know, uh, have that that kind of like new person rapport or whatever, um, so that that really helped a lot, and you know. Uh, our our lead uh lou is is um I, should i be dropping names actually i feel like i mean i don't I, think it's tra- bad yeah I'm unless right? you're trash talking okay I don't no, think it uh, is there an nda on their name like uh, <laughs> oh we know his name's lou <laughs> yeah you're uh, gonna be fbi'd <laughs> you're gonna be fbi'd um yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so uh so he he's our lead and he's like super super nice like really chill um like very hands off like he'll where we'll be making jokes or whatever and he'll he'll be listening in and he'll he'll chime in every once in a while with something really funny so um it it just felt sort of natural like you know it it felt like and also another thing that kind of helped actually is we we we're running out of space (laughs) in our office so we kind of got put into this weird like sort of common area like like outside of the art pit so like all the artists are like in in the art pit like together and we're like separated from them like we're like next to the character art people um which is like behind a, a wall <laughs> um are they not in the art pit what no they're special we oh they're special we, we artists give them a special home uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh so so it kind of helped being a like a little bit isolated so we didn't have to like look at new people like all the time and we could just kind of like walk past them and be like oh hey how's it going and it wasn't like this constant like like people are talking about stuff and they know each other and like, Oh my God, like, how do I fit in? How do I contribute? You know, it was very, it was very nice to have that sort of buffer there for the first couple of months. Um, and it kind of just helped us like as a small group, like me, me, Eugene and Lou just kind of like grow closer together. And we've, we've actually hired, uh, two, two people on our, on our team. Um, like since, since we started. So it's, it's now like four of us and Lou. Um, so it, it's, slowly you know getting more so we have more more people to talk to and things like that um so it's only getting better um not that it was bad to begin with i feel like i'm rambling now <laughs> no no it's all good it's all good mm-hmm. um so it's sorry, not Ryan, as bad you... <laughs> well the rambling isn't as bad as when we brought up pokemon go so oh no <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Speaking like a new of... record i'd say <laughs> yeah it's like a new record for this podcast it's, it's like a biggest ramble thing. <laughs> completely going off about Pokemon Go and walking dogs, chasing squirrels. Right. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Good times. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> um, but yeah, as Ryan was saying, like every other question here that we have for you, we've just kind of naturally gone over. Um, everything else here is mostly about um, Twitch and your streaming and why you decided mm-hmm. to start. But we talked about that as well. Um, and would you recommend streaming to others, which you made it very clear, right? You absolutely would. Yeah, especially if you're a student, like, like just get out there, you know? Because it's not an, it's not enough. Like, like if you're in if you're in school for this stuff, it's not enough to to have time, um, or it's not enough to have your your you know, lecturers or instructors or whatever, um, giving you feedback. Because like you know, like you mentioned earlier, they might not have time, or they might be you know busy with other students and stuff like that. So. Um, it, it's just another good way of receiving feedback on on what you're working on, um, and 
it's super motivating more more motivating than school because you're not doing it for like grades or anything like that you're doing it for you know your yourself right and you have your mm -hmm. own schedule and you can you can start to feel when you're taking too long on something um and you can that that's that's a good skill to have because just you can you can um start to adjust um your way of working uh so you can you know avoid slowdowns and stuff like that uh in your own way um without the stress of like deadlines or whatever um so yeah cool boy i'm getting yeah. super luxury today i'm sorry guys <laughs> no, no 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 we like it we like that <laughs> this is like a learning channel and stuff so okay. yeah like it's not like a podcast for only cool kids oh right yeah i i'm a cool kid then i wouldn't i wouldn't be allowed on here like <laughs> <laughs> oh damn <laughs> uh but yeah in all seriousness uh Here's like kind of an extra question that mm -hmm. we had to fill in because you already answered them all. <laughs> too good. Um, You're too good at answering questions. Yeah, like dang. <laughs> how did you answer questions that we hadn't even asked yet? <laughs> Was that actually but, uh, your question? No, uh Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> um Do you know how the universe was created? That's a oh is this is this like a, a bonus question like did you ask everyone like wow. no 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 <laughs> I felt like this is the one question you can't answer <laughs> uh, the there was there once was a game artist and oh. uh, he created okay. the best game ever uh, and now uh, now and then he got bored it's all a simulation so, it actually sounds vaguely religious so <laughs> yes Oof. yeah Do you know something we don't <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's me. Ooh, the Church of Hans. Oh boy, edit that out. That was terrible. <laughs> no. It's too it's late. It's oh too no, staying. Uh, um, uh, actually, I had a real question, but okay. I felt like asking that. I hope um, so, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, do you have any advice other than you recommend streaming and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Like, think of like let's say. If you were to tell little little Hans and like all of your other little game art friends, like what <laughs> do you have any advice for them? Like, so you're talking about like like teenage, like high school, middle school, like anybody. It could have been Hans from last week. Oh, could have uh, been Hans from this morning at breakfast. So I'm gonna go with Hans from like high school okay uh and i guess i guess my advice would just be like make smart choices with your time because uh you you actually don't get that much <laughs> you know um so like if you if you want to do something that you enjoy doing then do it um obviously this is like constructive things not like you know if you want to sit at home and do drugs all day like you know maybe maybe don't do that because that that might be that might be harmful uh but you know uh make smart choices with your time that's i think that's our, that's where i'm gonna leave it <laughs> don't do drugs little hans there we go play, play, hey. play <laughs> don't do drugs <laughs> we're learning so much today yeah that's great um but yeah that's awesome man I i'm really happy that you uh you got to come on and, and share such like a different perspective because not a lot of people really get to understand how it works from a, a streaming perspective and how that sort of works with your learning and and how you get to the community that way but mm -hmm. i mean i learned a lot here and i'm sure people listening are, are very thankful that you took the time to come sit down and, and chat with us so yeah if there's anything you want to shout out or or plug or anything like that we'll of course put it in the description but the, uh -huh. the mic's yours man uh sick uh <laughs> uh actually i do i, I would like to say like all, all the people that, that have been watching me over the years like like the reason i am here in in california at respawn like this that's all you guys like that like yeah i i streamed or whatever but you guys were the ones that that motivated me and and and, and pushed me to keep on going and um, uh, like I, I give you guys like full credit. Um, so thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you stuck around this whole time, thanks for sticking around. If you joined halfway through, thanks for joining. And, uh, 
yeah love you all that's all i wanted to say i'm gonna cry <laughs> that's oh, beautiful oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah well uh we'll surely link your twitch stream and like if you want like any other social media stuff down in the description of the video and everybody check him out next time he's live and yeah thanks man great yeah thank this is you awesome. everyone for for yeah it, it's it's cool eh? it's just like a nice because like, our podcast is it's not super professional it's just a bunch of guys chatting and, and right it's a good time i'm glad you came on but um yeah, I guess that kind of wraps up the the third episode of our Pixel Pusher podcast. Or for today, Sweet. it's more or less like the Pokemon Pusher podcast. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I demand new name the change. Title be changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the thumbnail. It's got to be. Of course, I got to go back <laughs> and edit don't all do the other that. ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess that wraps it up. So thank you, uh, like Han said, to anyone who who made it this far and is still listening along. Appreciate everything. If there's anyone you want us to uh, get on the podcast or any topics you want us to cover, let us know on uh, either Twitter or in the comments here. But other than that, hopefully has a great day or a wonderful night, and we will uh, catch you in the next video. So uh, yeah, that's it from me. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, Bye. everybody. <laughs>